Hello and welcome. My name is Gilda. I'm a partner in the Immigration Department at Kingsley Napley. Um, we're here today to talk to you about the position of British lawyers flying into Europe after the end of the transition period uh, on a fly-in, fly-out basis. And because of the fact that British nationals will be treated as third country nationals, what are the implications of them flying into Europe on a fly-in, fly-out basis to advise clients there? I'm delighted to say that I have with me today uh, my colleague, Julie Norris, from the Regulatory Department at Kingsley Napley, who will be giving us just a brief overview of what law firms, British law firms, should be thinking of when they are sending lawyers on a fly-in, fly-out basis into the Netherlands. With that, I've also got um, a, a wonderful colleague from the Netherlands, Peter Krop, from Kroos Advocaten, a well-respected uh, immigration firm specialising in Dutch immigration law. Uh, and we will be covering the issues just from what you need to be aware of uh, from an immigration perspective. With that, I'm going to first turn to my colleague, Julie, who will be uh, covering just the issues in respect of the regulatory perspective. Julie, what is the regulatory position for UK solicitors flying uh, on a, fly a FIFO, fly-in, fly-out basis to the Netherlands after the transition period ends? Gilda, thank you. The short answer for lawyers, solicitors in particular, who want to leave the UK, hop on a plane and go and advise clients in the Netherlands post the 1st of January 2021, whatever the position with a trade deal is, is that they will be permitted to fly in and fly out, so act on a FIFO basis and advise on English and EU law. So it's good news for solicitors who want to go and practice in the Netherlands. The Netherlands have broad practicing rights for third country lawyers, which solicitors will be um, if legal services isn't covered by a trade deal. So they can also advise on UK and international and EU law remotely. So in fact, in this day and age, hopping on a plane isn't as necessary as perhaps it was in the past. And you can continue to advise clients in the Netherlands from the UK remotely after the 1st of January. Um, and as before, as now, um, solicitors in the UK can also advise clients on arbitration, conciliation and mediation. So the position overall is favourable with clients who are domiciled or um, temporarily resident in the Netherlands. Thank you. Are there any conditions of restrictions attached to the scope of permitted practice? Ilda, yes, there are. There are three restrictions that are um, relevant to, to English solicitors who are advising clients um, in the Netherlands on a FIFO basis. First, you mustn't appear in court. That's a restriction that um, the Netherlands has in common with many other of the EU 27 countries. You can't, as a UK regulated solicitor, appear in a court in the Netherlands. Um, second, and this is a little bit more nebulous, but but the second restriction is that any advice given and services provided to clients are and must be restricted to formal client meetings and work at the margins of those meetings. So emails related to or ancillary to meetings and telephone calls. Um, third and, and, and much more clearly delineated is that UK solicitors, when they fly in, fly out, um, mustn't hold themselves out um, as a Dutch lawyer. Um, they must use their, their home country title, which will be um, for these purposes a solicitor and then partner or associate, so whatever your role is in your particular firm. Thank you. Will legal protected privilege apply? Ilda, thank you. Um, in answer to your question directly, no. Um, LPP does not apply to UK solicitors flying in and then flying out and giving advice to their clients in the Netherlands. So if the protective wrapper of privilege is needed, and, and there's no reason to, to imagine for a client meeting it wouldn't be, um, UK solicitors um, might wish to consider getting a local lawyer um, to attend that meeting so that privilege applies uh, to the discussions that are held. Thank you, uh, Julie. Um, Peter, have you any top tips that you would give British law firms, UK law firms, uh, any advice on when they sending British lawyers on a FIFO basis into the Netherlands after the transition period ends? 
Um, yeah, sure we have. I think the best tip um, would be to actually listen to this talk, to this series um, because I think it's uh, very important at this moment to be aware of the things um, that are going to change and the fact that this time it's for real. The Brexit deadlines have been shifting and shifting, but um, this time um, it, it is going to change. And the most important thing that is going to change um, if we look at this, um, uh, these questions, is that British lawyers are not automatically uh, allowed to work anymore uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, the Netherlands uses a so-called uh, uh, no unless policy if it comes to uh, work being carried out by third country nationals, so non-EU citizens in the Netherlands. So that means that for every activity that can be qualified as work, uh, either a work permit is required or um, an exemption has to be in place. Thank you. Assuming the British uh, lawyer is going to be in the Netherlands just to visit the client, so in other words, not providing any advice, uh, what's the maximum amount of time that they'll be able to spend in the Netherlands? They will fall under the scope of the, um, the regular Schengen rules for uh, short-term uh, visits, which means that they can spend 90 out of 180 days um, uh, in the Netherlands. Um, of course, it's also very important um, to establish what exactly is the scope of the, uh, the exemptions that are applicable. So the relevant exemption is the business meetings um, um, exemption, and these meetings are defined as meetings that are relevant for the business development of the company, the management of the company, the concluding of contracts. And as long as the meetings are limited to these activities, a work permit is not required. Um, around um, those meetings, the lawyer is also allowed to perform incidental activities uh, for the firm back in the UK. So for example, emailing a client uh, from the airport when you're waiting for your flight. Thank you. Um, so will it then just be a case of British national lawyers flying in for example, into Amsterdam from the 1st of January onwards next year and getting their visas at the airport or how will that work? Um, no, they will be um, entitled to a visa-free travel, uh, which means that uh, just the British passport is sufficient to, to travel those 90 out of 180 days. So there will be no visas uh, issued on arrival. Thank you. Is the position then different? And it sounds from what you say, uh, you know, what you've just described before, different then essentially if the, 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 this British lawyer is actually going to be giving advice that's chargeable. Based on what you've said, um, I, I get the impression that work permissions required, even if it's for a few days, um, and that you actually need to get a work permit. Is that right? Yes, that is definitely right. So um, uh, this type, kind of activities will definitely qualify as work. Uh, under the Alien Employment Act that we have in the Netherlands. Uh, and they also exceed the limitations of the uh, business meetings exemption. Uh, so that means that a work permit is indeed required also for just a few days or even a few hours. Okay, so then I suppose the question then is, Peter, how quickly could one obtain a work permit? And is it something that you actually have to obtain in advance of your travel? Yes, I'm afraid that is uh, not, not very easy. Um, uh, it will take three to five weeks to actually process an application for a work permit, um, and it cannot be issued retroactively. That means that you need to have a work permit in hand uh, the moment you start working in the Netherlands. Um, so that means that you need to plan at least three to five weeks ahead before um, uh, doing this kind of work in the Netherlands. I think the problem is going to be that I foresee is that some of the travel that British lawyers will have might be at a moment's notice and the difficulty is going to be to plan ahead when sometimes you, you don't know what to plan for because it, it's not something that is going to uh, uh, happen straight away. So that's going to pose a problem. With that in mind, what do you, what kind of things would you suggest if all else fails, what should they be doing? Um, well, um, you know, if a, if a, if a lawyer is, is, is flying to the Netherlands and, and, and um, is being stopped here at the border control and asked for a work permit and it's not applicable, then the only way to solve that is to um, um, get a cup of coffee and take out your laptop and not actually cross the, uh, you know, cross the border into the Netherlands and either uh, set up a video conference, which we all have been doing, of course, um, a lot for the last year because of uh, COVID-19. Um, um, because as long as you're technically not in the Netherlands, uh, which you are not if you have not crossed the border, um, uh, all these provisions are not applicable and you're allowed to uh, allowed to work. Um, if you really need to meet your, um, your, 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 your client in person, uh, the only um, thing we can think of is to um, um, 
sit there um, uh, before the border control and have your client book a flight to London and actually not board the plane. And then uh, you meet each other there and you can have, uh, have your talk. And since the, the UK lawyer is then technically not um, in the Netherlands, uh, these provisions are not applicable and a work permit is not required. But of course, that's not a very um, optimal solution, I'm afraid. No, I, 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 pre I appreciate. Um, thank you so much both to, to Julie uh, and to Peter for your time and for sharing the information. Uh, thank you very much to all of you who are watching this podcast. We hope that you have found this very helpful. Please be on the lookout. We will be sharing further podcasts uh, focusing on other jurisdictions within the European Union. Thank you.